I want to get your thoughts on the brink of the 2020 AFL season. How are yeah. you feeling as a Fremantle fan? And like, what's your outlook for this season? Are you optimistic? And uh, what's your kind of goal for the year? I think being a Frio fan this year may be a bit rough, if I'm honest. Um, as opposed to recent years, it's been glorious. Um, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I think playing away from home, the full season away from home, which could potentially happen, um, to be honest, I think that could definitely put Frio in contention for a for the wooden spoon. Um, you know, I'm not... Seeing as we're, we're in this, you know, rebuilding stage, I hate saying it because we've said it for so many years, but it's the truth. We're still a developing list. Um, you know, I'm more concerned with, I just want to get games into players. Um, and I'm more concerned with kind of watching the progress of like individual players in the team um, rather than, and obviously I want the effort to be there. So if, you know, if I could see improvement in a number of players and we're competitive in a lot of games, I think I'd be fairly happy with that uh, for 2020, to be honest, Jesse. If 1 to 10 is like the premiership cycle, right? So like 10 is like the Eagles right now going for a flag. Whereabouts yeah. is Freeman or how far off do you think they are? I reckon Freo is at about four or five. Yeah. Um, the reason I don't say lower is I think... We, we still have guys like Fife, Walters, um, a few older guys like that, um, that I kind of feel like I want to utilize while they're still available. Um, so if I said, you know, the premiership till it's going to be in six years time, um, there'd be pretty much, yeah, very little chance that those two guys would be there. So we got to take, um, you know, advantage of those guys while they're here. So, um, that puts the pressure on the young guys to to really, you know, get going quickly. Um, I think we're at a four or a five. What about you? Yeah, I think I think Fremantle's kind of suffered from um, a lot of their good prime age players being injured in recent times. So, like, you barely got much out of Hogan so far, despite spending yeah. a lot for him. Alex Pierce is one of your most talented players, I reckon, and he's... He's barely got on the park. I think Hamlin... Well, Hamlin's injured at the moment, but, you know, uh, I guess yeah. what the point is, I'm saying you're missing a lot of football out of these guys, and then the ones you mm -hmm. do sort of develop kind of walk out, so you lost Brad Hill, uh, Lockie yeah. Neal, and to a lesser extent, Lockie Weller. Like, when you look at the talent on Fremantle's list right now, how do you think mm. it's shaping up? Do you need to... Do you feel like, oh, there's not enough young talent to push, or do you actually feel like, oh, we've... With the recruitment we've done in recent years, I'm happy to sort of work on getting the games into the guys we do have, rather than necessarily drafting for a couple more years. Where do you sit on that? Yeah, I think um, you pretty much hit the nail on the head with the second point there. Um, I think I think the talent is there. It's more about developing the talent. Um, and again, we got, we got a few guys at the right age. Um, fingers crossed, you know, Hogan can, can get on the park. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. It's, to be honest, it's going to be hard for Justin Longmuir to get everyone firing and lining up all at the same time. So that's really the challenge for him. Um, but yeah, I think I think the talent's there at the moment. What about yourself? Yeah, I do agree with you. I, I like a lot of the talent at Fremantle. I think it's a little bit underrated for by, by maybe some you know fans outside of WA, which is understandable because I probably underrate, you know, str like average or struggling clubs in Victoria, I probably don't rate their talent yeah. as much as I should. And Fremantle's had a lot of injuries and I kind of have that excuse. So I think the, yeah. the talent is pretty well placed uh, other than a couple mm -hmm. of big players leaving. But yeah. I also I think you kind of touched on the, really the crux of this video, the, the real topic question that I wanted to ask you is... Uh, are Fremantle at the moment, with the way they're trending, are they wasting the career of someone like Nat Fife, an absolute generational talent, potentially the best Fremantle player ever? He's, yeah. He, what, he must be like 29, I think he will turn this year. Yeah. Are, are they going to waste him? What's the go? What do you reckon? Um, yeah, I don't know. I wish I could answer the question. Um, no, but there is a good chance that, yeah, he, he, won't, he won't play a final again. Um, you know, you'd like to think with someone like Nat Fife that he could probably 
stick around till maybe 34, 35 um, with his talent level if he stays injury free. Um, if he can make it to that age, then I'm pretty confident um, that the young guys would have come through by then. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, there could be a strong argument made that maybe Fremantle are uh, wasting five. Yeah. Do you think he's your best player ever? That's a really tough one. Um, I th- I kind of feel like Pav's a bit underrated by some East Coasters. When you think that he kicked 700 goals, so he's right up there in terms of uh, the most goals kicked um, by players. Um, the fact that he was also an All-Australian midfielder, All-Australian backman, um, I think he averaged like 20-something disposals, which is pretty nuts um, for, for a player um, as tall and as big as he was, especially in the noughties. Um, so oh, it's a really tough one, to be honest. It probably, you know, Pav did a lot for Freo in terms of leadership, which I don't think Fife has quite gotten to that leadership um, level that Pav got to. But if if Fife could uh, lead Freo back into the finals, then um, I think yeah, you can't really you can't really go past Fife if if he could get some success. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. I think you summed it up pretty well. It's a I mean, have like you say, his his achievements are ridiculous, and you look at that and you think, wow, maybe he is the best. But then, by comparison, uh, Pav was never like considered the best player in the competition at any singular point. He was always just respected as like being one of the absolute greats, an absolute champion, but never, yeah. never like a dual Brownlow medalist. And Fife could end up with three mm-hmm. or four at this rate, so it's a tough one. True. If you said you had to redraft an eighteen-year-old Fife or an eighteen-year-old Pavlich, who would you go? Oh, you know what? I would probably go Pavlich. Uh, not necessarily th- from the fact that he's a better player, just more the fact he he's undoubtedly a better key forward than Fife, mm. and it's a lot harder to fill that position um, than it is to fill a uh, a midfield spot. Um, so I'd take six goals or five goals over someone that gets thirty five disposals, ten clearances. Yeah, fair enough. Um, this this five topic, like I've kind of put you on the spot with it, because because uh, the thing is, like yeah. this, this has sort of happened to Frio. It's not like they they've planned this as such, or maybe you can make the argument they could have done things differently. Um, mm. But I mean, like a lot of mature players walked out, and so in, to some extent they were forced into it. But I also want to know. Let's rewind back to 2015. Fremantle has just won the minor premiership, been bundled out in a prelim, uh, and. In my yeah. opinion, I don't think they were... Uh, going in that final series, the Eagles and Hawthorne, um, as far as I'm concerned, were the two teams, and Fremantle had fallen off to some extent despite a great start to the year. Mm-hmm. But 20, 2016, uh, what was it, 0-8 they started? Um, and yeah, the rebuild happened. Like I want to know, would you have done anything differently in terms of list management um, to start the year so shit? Let's say you were 0-8. Uh, what would you have done with the list? Uh, would you do anything different? Well, Oh, it's such a tough, tough question to uh, answer off the top of my head. Um, look, I, I know, yeah, people do talk about the possibility of trading Fife because we, at one stage, probably could have got um, just about three first round draft picks for him. Um, I probably don't subscribe to that camp. I think he brings more than just being a good player. Um, on the field, he's he is a good captain. Um, he's a leader, and he's kind of bringing some relevance to Freo in a time where there should be none. Um, yeah, I think the hard thing with Freo was that Ross Lyon. I don't think saw us falling off the cliff that we fell off. So there was a number of guys like Tendai Mizungu, um, Nick Subban. Um, Matt DeBoer, you know, Mickey Barlow, you know, like really good players on their day, but I feel like their time had well and truly come at Fremantle by that 2016 period. And I think our team, it kind of looked really slow and sluggish, like it was 
a lot of old war horses that maybe didn't have the fight in them that they had three or four years um, before. Um, you know, there's also people that think that maybe we should have drafted um, more West Australians as opposed to um, Vicks. Again, I don't really subscribe to that because I feel like um, you shouldn't sacrifice talent um, f because you think that you're more likely to keep um, a player that you pick. Um, I think most good clubs, um, they will draft who they think is the best player and they'll back in their systems and their community um, to be enough to keep that player around. Obviously, that hasn't happened in Freo in the recent years, so hopefully um, J-Lo can, can build a really strong community um, atmosphere around the club and really build that culture like Chris Fagan has at Brisbane over the last few years where yeah, players want to play for Freo and they want to be in WA and they enjoy um, playing for the club. Yeah, that's a that's a really good answer. I guess with when I when I say what would you have done differently, um, I didn't mean specifics, but like more. Um, well, I was thinking, I don't know if Fremantle should have cut the list as hard as they did and rebuilt from the from scratch because I I think we've that's led to this situation now where you've got Fife in the peak of his career, winning Brownlows, yeah. and Fremantle really can't really do much with that. But I think you summed it up really well, Lion through that peak period of 2012 to 2015, do you think for Lyon, he was criticised at St Kilda for kind of leaving them in a hole when he left because he didn't develop enough youth. Do you think he kind of mm. did that in Frio? Like in terms of, you know, like you said, a lot of war horses had done their time and it's kind of like 2016, what do we do now? Yeah. Do you think it was kind of a case of that? Um, I think maybe, maybe you could make an argument for that. I think the argument against that is that the fact that um, I know Ross really likes to stick with players that he feels have worked really hard for him and worked really hard for the club. Um, a guy like Ballantyne is a prime example. So Ballantyne, um, you know, played a much maligned role at Frio um, in his best years and is pretty cheeky and, you know, got a few whacks from people. But um, he was a really really brave player and he uh, really played for Ross. You could tell he was playing for Ross. And I think Ross sort of rewarded him um, for all that hard work by playing him for maybe longer than he should have. Um, yeah, I think another point against is probably the fact that up until halfway through that 2015, uh, we were arguably the best side. So, I mean, you, you wouldn't take the best side and say they're not playing enough young players, let's take out, you know, three guys and put in three youngsters to give them game time, um, I don't think. Um, you know, when you're in that position and you're up there on the ladder, you're just trying to win as many games as possible, I think, and put yourself in a good position um, to win finals. Um, yeah, so who knows? Maybe in that 2016 period, um, I think, after we did fall off the cliff, there's probably a strong argument that uh, we should have played more youth then. Uh, but I think to say we sh maybe should have developed more in the 14, 15 period, I think that's pretty harsh, to be honest. Okay. No, I think that's a very good answer. That's a very good answer. You kind of touched on it as well. I want to know, we talked a little bit off, uh, off air about this, but in your opinion, this is a fascinating mm -hmm. question for Fremantle, what is peak Fremantle? What is the best Fremantle team you've ever seen? Yeah, that's um, it's kind of a tough question. Um, I, th you know, twenty thirteen, I can't really go past. Um, I think, you know, because twenty thirteen, I probably rate more than fourteen and fifteen because of the older guys, McFarlane, Pavlich. Sandilands, Mundy, they were really in their prime around that time. And that, they were the core, probably, guys of the Fremantle team, um, along with maybe Stephen Hill and, and a younger Nat Fife. So, um, yeah, I think 2013. I'd probably take, you know, like um, having Mundy at his best and Sandilands at his best and McFarlane at his best 
as opposed to them being a bit older and then having Fife as like an exceptional talent, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's a really interesting answer. And I think it's a fascinating thing to hear from Fremantle fans because as an mm-hmm. Eagles fan, I, uh, I totally get your point about, yep. um, you know, those players in that peak of their career individually, uh, they would have been better to have. But I, as an Eagles fan, thinking those first nine rounds of 2015 was the one and tr- only time maybe I would say that Fremantle side is the best team in the competition. At 2013, you were playing probably, you were probably the peak uh, or oh, the best performing side like sort of later in the year, but you always had Hawthorne on top of the ladder. Whereas, because uh, they finished as minor premiers in 2013, but 2015, when you went 9-0 and mm. before that horrible Richmond game, Fife was ragdolling every yeah. opponent that jumped on his back. They had that amazing one-on-one yeah. battle with Dangerfield in Adelaide where you guys got up. And I remember thinking at that point, Fremantle is going to win the flag. This fucking sucks. Um, and then things kind of <laughs> collapsed for you at 2015. But um, I'm interested. I was yeah. interested in your opinion. And I'll, and I'll put it to the Fremantle fans who watch this video. What is the best Fremantle team you've seen? And, and the neutrals as well, because I, I think there's no real clear answer. It's really interesting. But uh, anyway, this was a pretty good chat. Um, thanks for giving me your thoughts and yeah. hopefully, um, you know, things looking up for Fremantle in uh, in 2020. It's going to be a weird year with everyone's focus is going to be a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, developing plays in this current climate, uh, it's going to be interesting and, you know, it, it's going to be... Well, it's going to be weird for every team. The Eagles are going to have to try and compete for a flag in weird circumstances, so... Yeah, who knows? It'd probably be a good season for Freo if we went with the Dennis Cometti idea, no premiership <laughs> points, I reckon. Yeah, like, we could finish, pr- like, equal minor premiers <laughs> in that circumstance, so... Who knows? Mark, could be what a, a genius year. idea that was from Dennis. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching the True yeah. Footy YouTube channel. Subscribe if you're new, and we will see you in the next video. Cheers.